Because I, I, I could think of a couple of people in recent times who have really been buoyed up by the, by the fact that they were captain and close at home. I think, I think Saurav Ganguly falls, falls into that category as someone who really enjoyed, enjoyed the job. Downey, I think, is a classic example. Yes. Yeah. Rahul Dravid realised a couple of years into his captaincy that he wasn't enjoying it. He's mm. probably getting weighed down. Yeah. So can you look at people's personalities? Is there a sort of template say, okay, this kind of personality gets buoyed up, this kind of personality gets weighed down? No, I think you could make mistakes if you, if you went purely on personality. But uh, could you look at Ganguly, for example, and say, I think this guy's going to enjoy it? Or could you look at a Michael Vaughan, who, who people rate as captain? Yeah, um, I think those examples are more difficult than a Vaughan. I think Vaughan, you know, was, was pretty obvious. But they're things that good selectors must be able to read. Mm. And they've got to be very good selectors nowadays because it's tougher. Because you, you, if you go back to, say, my case, um, you know, I captained, at least I captained South Australia five times or so before I captained Australia. So the, the Australian selectors got a bit of an idea of what sort of captain I was. But you take Michael Clark now. I don't think Michael Clark has ever captained New South Wales. You know, he captained Australia under 19 teams, things like that. But really, I, I don't count that for much because kids playing against kids is not, I don't think, a good way to judge. Uh, never mind captains, is not a good way to judge cricketers. So the selectors of today have got a much tougher job because they've got to, they've got to make the sort of judgment you're talking about, which is obviously his playing ability, but they've got to try and judge his character from not actually seeing him lead the team, which is not necessarily the most easy thing to do. Is, is a good captain in one system necessarily a good captain in another? For example, Australia's got a fairly ordered system and uh, people learn very early in life to, uh, to play their roles in a side and acquire a certain work ethic. Would a captain of Australia have been equally good captain of, say, say Pakistan, for example, where there's, you've, you've got to find your way amidst certain chaos and, and yet motivate a side to do well? Would you require different personalities, do you think? Do different teams demand different personalities as leaders? What, why would you worry about it? Because somebody who captains Australia isn't going to captain Pakistan. No, that kind of character. Yeah. Um, I mean, for example, an Afridi kind of character, say. My mind just be for all that you know, no, the right person for those kind of people. I mean, no, it's, I mean, it's just a view from the you, outside. You can't, you can't have a Freddie as a captain. Because he bites a cricket ball. Right? Well, yeah. no, but you see, people have, have seemed to have forgotten that that's not his first major, on, and, and I'm talking major, major indiscretion. You know, I mean, that pirouette that he did in the middle of the pitch, I mean, you might forgive a guy once for having brain lock, but two brain locks, you know, I mean... But I'm not, I'm not talking as much about Afridi as one person, as that kind of person who's, who's sort of ebullient and outgoing, maybe a little mischievous in a team that but he, requires a slightly mischievous person. But the problem with Afridi is that he can't control himself. So how can he control <laughs> the other ten? I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if I was a Pakistan selector, you know, anyone who came to the selection table and mentioned Afridi's name, I'd say... Uh, that name is off the list. He, he, you know, I wouldn't... Uh... Who have been the captains you've admired over the years? Um, I mean, there's some pretty obvious ones. Uh, um, Imran Khan, I you know, had great admiration for him as a leader. Mark Taylor, I thought, was an, was an excellent captain. But some of the less obvious ones, I thought Mike Gatting was, a, was an excellent captain of, uh, of England. And one of the reasons why, not, not the only reason, but one of the smartest things that Gatting did on that tour of Australia in 86, 87, was that every time Ian Botham started waving his arms around and wanted a field to move somewhere, Gatting just turned his back and placed the field that he wanted. But that's not the only reason. <laughs> no, that's not the only reason. Both are well known. Um, oh, no, no, it's got nothing to do with yeah. Botham. But I mean, you, you know, Botham is the sort of bowler, was the sort of bowler who needed 16 fielders because he wanted a fieldsman everywhere where the ball was hit. But you can't captain a side that way because in the end, all you're going to be doing is moving fielders to take, you know, to, to cover bad deliveries. And Gatting was smart enough to realise that you can't captain like that, so he just turned his back on him and placed the field that he wanted. And many other reasons. Another one, Arjuna Ranatunga, I thought was a terrific captain. And, and I'm not just talking about the fact that he won a World Cup. But, um, you know, I saw him in a game at uh, Belle Reve where he was outgunned 
you know, if you, if you listed the two teams there, Australia outgunned Sri Lanka by quite a margin. But he kept Sri Lanka in that game until about, well, in fact, Australia really only won the game on the final day in the last session. But they, you know, they were the only team from about three and a half days on that were going to win it. But Arjuna kept that side, uh, an, an outgunned side, in the game for much longer than they had any right to be in the game. So, you know, I don't judge captains on their one loss record. For instance, you know, Steve Waugh is the most successful Australian captain statistically. I think Steve Waugh, out of the last four Australian captains, I think Steve Waugh runs fourth in my book. Uh, you know, I've got Mark Taylor, Ponting, Ponting Border, probably about even, uh, depending on which era of border you talk about, when he wanted to be captain or when he didn't want to be captain. Uh, but once he decided that he did want to be captain, I thought he was a pretty decent skipper. I think Ponting gets a bit of unfair... Uh, he's a bit conservative with his field placings for my liking. But, I mean, you think of the... You think of the turnover, not, I'm not just talking average test match players here, I'm talking about turnover of really top class guys and in the case of Warren and McGrath, two champion bowlers. He's had enormous turnover of that level of player and yet he still kept Australia competitive. He's got to get some credit for that. Um, really? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's, I mean, and he's won what? Two World Cups, he's now won the Champions Trophy. I mean, under his captaincy, I mean, I, I think, I place Ponting ahead of Steve Waugh as a captain and, and the reasons why I don't rank Steve Waugh very highly is because I think he ran out of ideas pretty quickly. I mean he didn't have to run out of ideas quickly very often because he wasn't under the pump very often but I saw him run out of ideas Kolkata for instance in 2001 um, and the times that I saw him under the hammer he did run out of ideas. I've never seen Ricky Ponting run out of ideas. Mike really? Well the, the thing I'd say about Mike Brearley is I always thought it was hard enough to win a game when you're playing 11 versus 11. Why are you going to go into the side 10, what into if? a game 10 versus 11? What Hang on, if? you haven't heard me out yet. <laughs> uh, so that's one thing I'd say. Um, uh, and the second thing I'd say is Mike Brearley really only captained against one decent cricket team, three test matches, and, that's three. and Australia won all three of them. So, you know, I don't have... But then again, you know, that was the only, and I only played two of those three test matches. I didn't play against Brearley in the other games. He may have been better than what I ranked him, but, you know, on what I saw, you know, he lost 3-0, so he wasn't making a hell of a difference as a captain, and he really wasn't a good enough player to be playing for England. So, you know, I, I don't rank him anywhere near as high as a lot of people do.